there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to the top five most anticipated movies for fall, winter 2018. As usual, every year, the summer season goes by fast. We are now getting to the fall, winter season. So, of course, that means it's time for another top five. And I am here with my lovely guests. So, of course, before I do continue on with the video, let me go ahead and start off with everyone one by one, starting off with Film Fan. Uh, hey, what's up, you guys? Film Fan 0599 here again. We're back. Was probably going to be the most intense anticipated oh, oh, video. I, 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 will, I will talk about that in a little bit. I'll just, I'll just say that right now. This is probably the most intense anticipated video of all time. But... We are here, and it should be exciting. Um, I'm excited to see everybody's list as per usual, and uh, the fall winter season looks uh, promising. So I uh, can't wait to talk about it. So let's get to the others. Well, as you guys know me, I am Mr. Donald Glover. As you know me from stuff like Community, and this year with my uh, win, uh, fucking Solo, to a Star Wars story, and my a big hit, hit song, and my hit song, This Is America, which is like the best song of the year. But uh. You know, yeah, it's glad to be back on here with Tony and the boys. Yeah, it's fun being on here with you guys, so let's do it. All right, hey guys, uh, it's Kevin, of course, on uh, Tony's channel. Very happy to be here for the uh, fall winter um, anticipated video, which is always a special one for me because this was actually the first one I appeared on back in uh, 2015. So always get a little sentimental. Um, you know, when we do these and fall winter time is easily, I think the my favorite time of year when it comes to movies, there's so much Oscar stuff coming out and a lot of really great films and things like that. So I'm very excited to talk about it. This fall season looks incredible and I'm very excited to talk about uh, what films I'm really excited for. Hello, my name is Jackson Fulcher and I was once forcibly removed from a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great story. It's totally relevant to this. Oh my god. I'm honored to be here. That is all. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and now last but not least, well actually yeah, last is uh Auburn Wonder. First of all, um Tony, fuck you because you removed the not least part, so I clearly am the least, so fuck you. Now um <laughs> I am here, um, as usual, because I'm the pretentious one here, um, <laughs> and um, I'm out to shove my art, my art house movie taste, and this is my favorite one to do because this is when all the Oscar films come out, art house is at its finest, and I love to be a pretentious little asshole. And uh, yes, as um, film fans so eloquently stated earlier, which Tony will obviously get into, uh, this is going to be a very intense one because yes. we're, we're all having a little bit of a competition going on. <laughs> but um, and I know I'm going to win, so um, ain't no shame there. But I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me on as usual. I really like doing these. And uh, this is going to be a very good video, hopefully. So thank you. Let's Let's do this. Okay, so of course, before we do get into our honorable mentions, there is something that I have to mention. Since obviously this is going to be a very different list, because uh, I think this season is quite different compared to the other past seasons, um, I figured I make an interesting game with the guys right here. I told them through Facebook, whoever can guess what my number one most anticipated movie of this season and just the rest of the year is, they will actually get to host the next top five anticipated video. And that's only <laughs> if they get it right. Now let's get into our honorable mentions. So my honorable mentions, uh, as you all know, as, and I'm sure as my guests know, they haven't been exactly jam packed, at least not for a long time. I can tell you this honorable mentions for the first time in a while is actually pretty jam packed. All so right. let's get into my honorable mentions. Thank you, Tom Cruise. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Ride ain't over yet. All right. So in order, I have number 15, Outlaw King. Number 14, White Boy Rick. Number 13, A Star is Born. Oh. Number 12, If Steel Street Could Talk. Number 11, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. 
Number 10, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Number nine, Bad Times at the El Royale. Number eight, Suspiria. Number seven, Roma. And number six, Beautiful Boy. Those are my honorable mentions. My honorable mentions. So here they are. My honorable mentions are The Nun, The Predator, Bad Times at the El Royale, Aposto, uh, Halloween, uh, Mid-90s, Suspiria, Boy Erased, The Girl in the Spider's Web, Widows, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Robin Hood, Mary Poppins Returns, Alita, Battle Angel, Bumblebee, and The Star is Born. All right, again, my round of mentions are The Predator, Record Route 2, Widows, Mid 90s, Halloween, Bumblebee, Suspiria, Creed 2, Mary Poppins Return, Welcome to Marwin, Outlaw King, Boy Race, and the one that was close to making my list, Holmes and Watson. All right, next up, everyone knows this is the ultimate Mr. Yes. Oh. Mentions right here. So go ahead, Kevin. Yes, get comfortable, my dudes. Get out that Coke, get out that popcorn, whatever you need, because this is probably going to be one of the longest ones I've done. I have not only honorable mentions, I made a fucking top 20 because there is too much good shit in there. We're just going to get into it right now. We have The Nun, Blaze, Sierra Burgess is a loser, A Simple Favor, Lizzie, Mandy, Colette, the house with a clock in its walls, hold the dark, the old man in the gun, monsters and men, King Lear, climax, goosebumps haunted Halloween, apostle, the kindergarten teacher, beautiful boy, what they had, Halloween, serenity, can you ever forgive me, burning, overlord, Peterloo, outlaw king, fantastic beast, the crimes of Grindelwald, Ralph breaks the internet, green book, shoplifters, and in the apocalypse, under the silver lake. Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, Roma, Bumblebee, Holmes and Watson, Bird Box, On the Basis of Sex, Destroyer, and this one doesn't have a release date, but it is on there, Slice, and then my 20 through 6, uh, number 20, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, number 19, The House the Jack Built, number 18, White Boy Rick, number 17, The Front Runner, number 16, The Favorites, Number 15, Backseat. Number 14, Welcome to Marwin. Number 13, Mary Queen of Scots. Number 12, A Star is Born. Number 11, Wildlife. Number 10, Bohemian Rhapsody. At number 9, Mid-90s. Number 8, Boy Erased. Number 7, Widows. And then this one. This one literally came so close to my top five, and that is the Sisters Brothers. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tough act to follow, right? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I also had, like over 20 movies I was looking forward to, but since I don't want to wind anyone, I actually shortened it down. Yeah, okay. I see how it is. Mm -hmm. My honorable mentions are A Simple Favor, Lizzie, The House with the Clock in Its Walls, Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween, The Kindergarten Teacher, Halloween, Bohemian Rhapsody, Clo oh, oh, Overlord, not Cloverfield, Overlord, Outlaw King, Widows, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Under the Silver Lake, Bumblebee, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, Welcome to Marwin, The House the Jack Built, and Mary Poppins comes back. AK returns. AK, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. All right, so for my opera mentions, I have, I have a lot actually this time, so uh, let's just get into it. Um, uh, Fahrenheit 11.9, the new Michael Moore documentary, I'm really interested in that. Blaze, Ethan Hawke's structural debut. Um, Venom, just because I wanted this movie to happen for years. I'm so excited for it. But not as much because it doesn't look very good, unfortunately. Uh, Goosebumps Haunted Halloween. You know, that's Goosebumps is my childhood, so I look forward to that. First Man. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I like Jamie Sizzle. I've not seen La La Land, but I love uh, Whiplash. And the IMAX view for this in front of Mitch Russell Fallout was incredible. Um, Halloween. Um, I'm a big fan of the franchise, so looking forward to that. Wildlife. Um, Paul Dano is directing that. Boy Erase. Uh, sounds good. Suspiria. Very interested in seeing how that turns out. Bill Street could talk. Obviously, interested in that because you know Barry Jenkins and it looks great. Widows um, looks great. Mid nineties, this looks amazing. Uh, that almost made my top five. Uh, uh, Roma looks fantastic. Um, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, um, the new Coen Brothers anthology film, uh, that I'm very interested in. And then these last three don't have a release dates. Um, but the first one I know is coming up this year, and that is Slice. I'm very looking forward to that. It looks fucking wonky as hell. Uh, and these last two, um, they're they're supposed to come out this year, but they probably won't. 
and then it's Domino by Brian De Palma. And then if this one did come out this year, it would be my number one. Uh, and that is uh, Radgun, uh, the Terrence Malick film. All right, now let's get into our top five. Woo! So my number five is Bohemian Rhapsody. I am unbelievably hyped for this movie. Like, you have no idea. I thought the marketing has been absolutely fantastic so far. Some of the best editing I've seen in the marketing so far. The entire cast looks absolutely tremendous. I know Brian Singer has supposedly, like, directed at least most of this movie, but then something happened, so another director had to come in. But, like, whatever the case is, the direction does look very good from the trailer still. Rami Malek and everyone else, they look absolutely great here. And I look forward to seeing how they can, you know, lip sync as if they're actually singing the songs that Queen has done. And um, Queen themselves, they're definitely one of my favorite rock bands of all time. I love their music. I can listen to their music over and over again. Um, just seriously such a great rock band and the fact that they finally have a biopic just really excites me i hope it's one of those biopics that isn't messy that doesn't disappoint i hope it does absolutely deliver and that's why bohemian rhapsody is my number five all righty so we're on to my number five and my number five five is holmes and watson right. uh holmes and watson uh I'm a huge fan of Will Ferrell, as everybody knows, he's my favorite comedic actor of all time. And I love the previous movie that he did with John C. Riley called Step Brothers. So yes. this is basically so this is basically ten years later, they're doing another movie together, except it's going to be with Sherlock Holmes. I cannot wait to see this. Um hopefully it's really good. We still don't have a trailer for it. All I know is this is coming out in November, I believe. And um, you know, just that premise alone. That's going to be a much more comedic take on Sherlock Holmes, and these two are playing Holmes and Watson. Like, that's all I need to know for this movie, to be honest, just to be excited. Like, I, I can't wait. I hope it's another hit like uh, Step Brothers and whatever. So I can't wait to see the reuniting of these two, and hopefully it's a great comedy. And hopefully they play up on a great comedy mystery with this. So, yeah, that's my number five, Holmes and Watson. All right, my number five is The Bad Times at the El Royale. All right, all right. So, like, the director of this movie and the writer is Drew Goddard. Drew Goddard, sorry. Um, and he wrote Cabin in the Woods, which I really like, and he wrote The Martian, which I loved. So, I was looking forward to this movie, and I and I watched the trailer, and this movie looks so good. Like, and you also got a great cast. You got John Hamm, Jeff Bridges. Uh, Dakota Johnson is finally moving away from that Fifty Shades bullshit, and Chris Hensworth, and it just looks like a fun time, and that's all I got to say. I'm just really looking forward to the movie because of Drew Goddard, and like so far he's been knocking it out of the park recently. So yeah, that's kind of why it's my number five. All right, so my number five, like I said, for the longest time, I had the Sisters Brothers at number five. I was so confident in that being my number five. It had such an amazing cast and everything. Then I saw the trailer for this movie, and immediately that got knocked down. And that is Barry Jenkins' new film, If Beale Street Could Talk. Uh, obviously, I'm a huge fan of his first film, Moonlight, or not first film, but like the first film that like really got him a lot of recognition and things like that. And, uh, you know, Moonlight, I think, is fantastic. And what I really love about this movie is that it's a completely different story. Sure, it is still in almost all black cast. Sure, it's centering on you know, a bunch of black individuals, but it's a much different story this time around. It's a period piece. It's in the 60s. Uh, and sure, it's a premise we've seen done before with like, you know, uh, husbands in jail and the wife is like pregnant or whatever. And she has to kind of go through that on her own with like her mother and things like that, simultaneously trying to get him out of jail. But this film looks like there's tons of passion behind it. It really looks like Barry Jenkins has really taken his time with this one. And what I really loved about the trailer is just how minimal everything was. There's not a lot of sound going on. Most of the trailer is just like screams and sounds of like subways and things like that. And just that alone has me intrigued. 
The acting here obviously looks amazing. I think Barry Jenkins is honestly going to knock it out of the park again. That trailer completely sold me. I really don't want to see anything else for this movie. It's one of those movies I honestly want to kind of go into pretty blind. And that's really all I got to say. Number five, absolutely, if Beale Street could talk. Can't wait for this one. Pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. All right, my number five is Roma. Now, normally for a Netflix release, eh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care too much about it because Netflix is more, if more negative, sometimes good, but more negative. But this one is different because this is directed and written by Alfonso Cuarón. From the trailer that was released not too long ago, it visually looks beautiful. Like cinematography looks like best of the year level. Um, and as far as trailers go, they kept it very minimal. As far as I know, the plot is um, uh, from what Caden told me earlier that. Uh, it's based on a bit of his uh, life before, like his childhood, if I'm getting that right. And that has me more excited. I think he can craft a very good story based off that, a very good drama, and just a visually pleasing movie. Uh, overall, I just can't wait for it to hit Netflix. And screw you, cons, for not making it eligible for any awards. That's all. My number five is Climax by Gaspar Noe. Um, this film looks crazy. In, like, every way imaginable. I, I And I guess it's about these, like, dancers who are, like, rehearsing, and then they get drugged, and most, and a lot of them go to, like, hell, and, and they trip out, and I guess it's supposed to be, like, a musical as well. I, I don't even know. It sounds freaking crazy. Uh, Gaspar Noe is notorious for pushing the grounds of cinema in disturbing and very intriguing ways. Uh, and the A24 is distributing this, which I find very interesting. Uh, so because of that, I am very much looking forward to this. It sounds like my kind of film, so I'm very excited for it. Now let's get into our number four. Let's go. So my number four is Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now, when it comes to Rick and Ralph, I absolutely love that movie. I think that movie is so funny. It's so well written. Uh, I really love the characters and I just love the overall journey of that movie. And uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, obviously, it's not going to focus more on the whole arcade thing. It's going to focus more on them going to the internet and i think that's kind of an interesting concept right there you know we get to see them go to like we get to see all these apps that we're familiar with like facebook twitter and all that and then obviously some of the disney properties like star wars and pixar all that so it's like it's like a whole world that's just that's just so well detailed based on the trailer animation obviously looks terrific and obviously you have the cast back like with john c Riley, sarah silverman a whole bunch of people here and the fact that they're even reuniting all of these famous disney princesses for this movie too also has me very excited too i can't wait to see that there's not much i could really say about the movie other than that i'm just really excited i'm a huge fan of the first and while i'm not expecting this one to be as good as the first in my opinion i do hope it is at least either a solid movie or a great movie i hope it's one of those two at least i just hope it delivers and just doesn't disappoint so ralph breaks the internet is my number four all right nice all right my number four is welcome to marwin um, this is a movie I am very, I, I didn't really know about until I saw the trailer, uh, I think, when it was released. And, um, I absolutely loved it. Uh, Robert Zemeckis is one of my favorite directors of all time. He's just a man that knows how to just bring you into something, whether it be with Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, whatever movie it may be. He just knows how to bring you in and capture, um, just magic with his movies. And this seems like another one of those type of movies. Like Steve Carell is an amazing actor. He's one of my favorites. He's one that has proven he could do comedic stuff, but also really knows how to do dramatic stuff very, very well as well. And he looks amazing in this. I really like the imagery with this a lot, especially with like when we cut to like his action figures and stuff, like just the imagination, the imagery that has with this, makes me very excited and I really do think we're going to get some great performances from the ensemble cast and stuff like that and it overall just looks very great in my opinion and maybe it could get some award recognition as well who knows but uh yeah I'm very excited for this movie um I can't wait to see it so yeah coming out around uh Christmas time definitely 
of all the uh, Christmas like releases out around that time. I think this is the one I'm looking forward to the most out of all of them. So yeah, my number four is Welcome to Morrowind. My number four. Now this was kind of my number four is Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. So um yeah, it was kind of between this and Wreck It Ralph, but you know I decided like. You know, I'm actually looking forward to this more because, you know, I'm a big Spider-Man guy, like a lot of people are. You know, I love, you know, I love the Sam Raimi movies, even Spider-Man 3. Sorry. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man movies are, the first one's, eh. The second one is fucking atrocious. And Homecoming is great. But uh, it's kind of cool seeing Spider-Man in a, you know, a new iteration of Spider-Man. Because this is Miles Morales. And uh, the animation looks like something out of a comic book itself, and it looks great. Uh, the voice cast looks like they're doing a great job. I, you know, I hope it's good. I hope it's really good. And uh, it's kind of a cool. It's kind of a cool scene. We're gonna have a Spider-Man movie in like Christmas time is coming out, so I can't wait to see it. So yeah, that's why it's my number four. All right, so my number four, uh, this is another one where I wasn't really expecting much from it, but the trailer came on and I was instantly hooked, and that is Bad Times at the El Royale. I love myself a good uh, sort of crime drama murder mystery thing going on here. The thing with this film is that, one, the cast here is just so great. You got Jeff Bridges, you got, you know, John Hamm, uh, Cynthia Revo from Color Purple fame coming off of her Tony Award a couple years ago. Uh, you got a bunch of other actors. Uh, Dakota Johnson, who I'm hoping this is like the comeback year for her. You know, this and another film I'm going to get into a little bit later. I think she just is really starting to become a very promising actress. But just the premise in this, I think, is very interesting. You know, you have a bunch of characters who aren't really what they say they are. Uh, of course, you do have Chris Hemsworth in here. His role is pretty mysterious. Not as mysterious as Nick Offerman because we literally don't know what role he's going to have in this movie. But... There's a lot of potential here. I think the style especially looks really great. You really do get that sort of, I think it's the 60s. You get that 1960s aesthetic, and they definitely have that down very well. Drew Goddard is a very good writer for sure. I personally really love The Martian. That was one of my favorite films of 2015. I think this has potential to be a really good crime drama. Please don't be another murder on the Orient Express where I have it on my list and ends up really disappointing me. Regardless, I am still... Very excited for this film, and that is why it is my number four. All right, my number four is If Beale Street Could Talk. Uh, now, this is from the director Barry Jenkins, who made Moonlight a couple years ago, two years ago, I think. And uh, it, the one best picture, and everyone loved it. A lot of people said it was the best year, and I liked the movie. I didn't, you know, fall like head over heels for it or anything, but it, it was it was a good movie. I liked it. I liked it, but um, so with this one, I was like, okay, director of Moonlight, let's see what his next project can be, and from the trailer, I was like, you know, unaware that it's based off of the source material, only finding that out after, uh, it hooked me instantly with the premise, I was like, this is very intriguing, like, I want to see this story unfold, and uh, finding out that it's based off of the source material, it's like, I really hope that Barry Jenkins is making this project his own, like, I hope he's gonna uh, take some chances with it, like, obviously, like, stick to like the important parts of the book, but do your own kind of thing. Like don't like uh, fan service people, unless I don't care. But it looks very good. The trailer of uh, visually, uh, not visually, but filmmaking wise, it looks like it's very well put together. The acting already looks really great, honestly. And I'm wondering how well this movie is going to do like award season wise. I don't know if a lot of people are going to uh, uh, like uh, praise and get it nominated for Oscars again because it's the director of Moonlight. That'd be interesting to see, but uh, for right now, I just can't wait to see the movie because it looks pretty awesome. All right, everyone. My number four is one that I am incredibly excited for, and that is the image book by John Luke Godot. Holy fuck, I'm excited for this movie. And, you know, I'm not just excited just because it is by John Luke Godard, who is easily a top 10 director of all time. You know, Breathless is one of my favorite films. Um, but this film sounds really fucking, like, creative and very ambitious. Basically, what I know about this film is that it's it, it was shot over, like, two years. And it's about, like, the, uh, I think it's, like, a Rob, like, world or something like that. There's no actors in it, but it has, like, a storyline still. I'm not sure. 
it was at Cannes. It got great reviews and it won the first ever special Pop Noir Award there. And like the whole festival was like, um, like their poster was themed after Weekend by John Luke Godard so that they know that this was a special film. And I, I just think it sounds really ambitious for someone at this point in their career. And the fact that it has someone like John Luke Godard directing it, you know, that's that just was the cherry on top. So that's why the image book is my number four. Okay, so my number three is First Man. Fuck! God damn it! Yeah! <laughs> Fuck. Now I'm just hoping Caden loses. <laughs> and me, because I have the same one. Okay, I really so now... I was really fucking confident, Jesus. <laughs> All right, so now that that's out of the way, I know Film Fan was going to have a reaction. I just needed to let him have that moment. Fuck. But yes, uh, not number one, but I am still very, very, very hyped for this movie. This is from Damien Chazelle, obviously, who directed Whiplash and La La Land. I love Woo! Whiplash, and I really enjoyed La La Land. And I can't wait to see what he does with this movie. The trailer just looks absolutely incredible. Obviously, Ryan Gosling, Claire Foy, uh, Kyle Chandler, the rest of the cast, they all look really great in this film. But man, I got to see the first look of this movie because I went to go see Mission Impossible Follow in IMAX. And when I saw that first look, mwah, mwah, mwah. if that trailer wasn't enough to get me hyped, that first look somehow got me even more hyped. Like it just raised my anticipation. My God, that was beautiful. So, yeah, it looks so immersive. It looks so well directed by Damien Chazelle. This is obvious, obviously something very different from him, for him. The scenes I obviously just can't wait to see is when uh, once they go up into space and go on the moon. This movie looks very, very exciting and interesting. It even kind of makes me feel claustrophobic a little bit from how it's filmed, which is, you know, obviously credit to the director. So, yeah, that is my number three, First Man. Woo! Uh, my I'm so, I, 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 I am sorry, film. film. My fucking life is a lie. Now, my number three. Um, Catwoman is, will be happy. Ah, shut the fuck up. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> shut the fuck up, all of you. Hey, you, you still have the possibility to be wrong. Okay. We still mean, got one more spot left. Right. There's, there's two. There's like two slots left, but we still got one not, slot, one slot left to, for a possibility not, to be for you to be not. wrong. All right. So my number three is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, I'm pretty sure as everybody fucking knows here, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. No and um, I've enjoyed a lot, most of the live action ones. So the fact that we're getting an animated feature of this is quite exciting to me. Um, this is a very different take because they're doing Miles Morales instead, Peter Parker. Peter Parker is in this, but he's not the main focus of this. So I am interested to see what they take that story also, I love how this literally looks like something out of a comic book to the point where they're doing the pow like you would see in a comic book. It's pretty cool. The animation looks very spectacular in my opinion. Shamik Moore, I believe that's how you say the actor's name. Yep. He is he's yep. playing Miles Morales in this. Um, I like him a lot as an actor, so I can't wait to see what he brings to this character as Caitlin looks very, very suspicious at something. Um, and there um, a poisonous spider in my bedroom that I need to kill. Oh, that's great. You got to get it live on, uh, live on, it. on this video. Uh, I have to be careful because it can jump at me and bite me. Actually, what you want to do is make love to it first. Okay. <laughs> I gotta think I got it. Kevin, you have no face. idea where the... F oh. Dear Spider. Okay, continue. <laughs> so, like I was, so, like I was saying, um, as we were on the edge of our seat right there, um, I can't wait to see what they uh, have in store for this. This is easily my most anticipated animated film for the rest of this year, and I'm very excited to see where they're going to take this. So, yeah, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is my number three. Uh, my number three is the film that I thought was going to be Tony's number one. But it, once I heard it was in his honorable mentions, I literally say, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I got to rewatch The Last Airbender again. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> anyway, my number three is A Star is Born. When I heard the premise of the movie, I was like, like it's in a, isn't this like a remake or something? Mm-hmm. It's the third one, actually. Yeah, it's the third like adaptation of this. Okay. Actually, it's actually it's actually the yeah actually it's the fourth if you count the one from the thirties. Dear God. Okay. Um, oh wow. So, 
I once I heard it, like okay, but and once I saw the trailer, I was like, this movie looks really good, and and honestly, the reason why I'm looking forward to this is because it's actually Bradley Cooper's like directorial debut, and I'm a big fan of Bradley Cooper. I love the guy, and like movies like The Hangover and like Place Beyond the Pines and Silver Linings Playbook, and even him as Rocket in Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm actually interested to see how he does being like a first time director and uh, Lady Gaga um, I haven't seen American Horror Story the seasons that she was on I heard like mixed things about it about her and that show but um, from the trailer she looks good Lady Gaga you know she's obviously a talented singer and I think their singing sounds really good so honestly yeah it's a movie that I'm surprised that I'm actually looking forward to it a lot because at first, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a chance. And I watched the trailer, and I was kind of, and I was blown away by it. So, yeah, Star Wars Born is my number three. So, in terms of horror films, uh, you know, I think this has been kind of an up and down year. You know, we've had two really great ones, and Maybe some. Yeah, Truth or Dare. Uh, and yeah, then we had like, yeah. like that. Truth or Dare is the best film of the year. And to a lot of people, you know, the big film of Halloween and things like that is is Halloween. That's the big horror film coming out. Some people might say The Nun. Fuck all of those because Suspiria is here to wipe the floor with all those other films. This film looks incredible. Uh, Suspiria, I have seen the original, and it's one of the scariest horror films I've ever seen, but it's also one of the most creative. Just the idea that like all these various objects, like a mirror and things like that, can be used as these weapons and they can kill people. I just think it's a really interesting concept, but it is a very complex movie, but it also is very short. So what I think Luca uh, Guadagnino, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to take the general idea of Suspiria and kind of build on it and give it some more, you know, add some more mythology in there, uh, try to expand some of the story. We complain all the time about remakes, but this is one that to me feels less like a remake and more of a reimagining. He's already said this is a very different kind of movie. It's going to be really gory. Like I said before, Dakota Johnson, I'm really hoping is going to turn her career around real quick. I think when she's not in a Fifty Shades film, she's a really great actress and she looks really great here. But let's talk about Chloe Grace Moretz, who to me looks completely unrecognizable. I am very excited to see what she does here. Tilda Swinton, uh, Mia Goth. Hell, you even have the original actress from the original, Jessica Harper uh, playing a role in this. I don't know what her role is exactly, but she's even in here. So if she was from the original movie, that just shows there's confidence there. That just shows that there is passion put into this film. I can already see this having some of the best cinematography of the entire year. Just that new trailer that was released in general, so many incredible shots just from that one trailer. I could honestly just dissect it frame by frame. There's so much to love about it. I am so hyped to see how this does turn out. It is without a doubt the most anticipated horror film of the rest of the year. And for that reason alone, it is definitely my number three. My number three is First Man uh, from director Damien Chazelle. Uh, and I've, I've adored his films from Whiplash and La La Land. And this is definitely a very different film for him, obviously. It's a, it's a biopic, after all. And, you yeah. know, he's really going for that Oscar there. Ryan Gosling is going to win this year. What what also has me intrigued, besides Damien Chazelle's making it, Ryan Gosling is in it, and Claire Foy from Unsane, and um, Kyle Chandler from the hit film Game Night. Everyone loves it. And um, uh, Jason Clark also. But it's also written by Josh Singer, who's actually had a bit of a rise recently. He's done some writing on one of my favorite shows, The West Wing. He's also written Spotlight and The Post. And oh, yeah. seeing him write this film is like, okay, I want, I'm wondering where this film is going to range as far as that. But I think this is definitely going to be like a director's movie. Like there's already, there, it already looks astonishing. And I didn't even see the IMAX preview. I've just seen the regular trailers and it already looks amazing. And I think Damien Chazelle is really knocking it out of the park. And I like that he's, uh, as much as I love the Whiplash and La La Land, I love that he's branching out a bit and he's doing something different not just like storytelling wise, but uh, directing style wise. And even Justin Hurwitz, who's doing the score, is uh, said he's gonna be testing out like more electronic, like synth kind of score. And that's very intriguing to me because I love his music. And I'm also interested to see how great Ryan Gosling is because he's an actor who I love. He's amazing. He is absolute man goals. And I'm especially interested in Claire Foy because I saw Insane. I think she's phenomenal. And I wanna see more stuff with her other than The Crown because I haven't watched that yet. So overall, just you know, as a as a big fan of Damien Chazelle, 
and especially Damien and Ryan Gosling's last film, La La Land. Um, very excited to see what they have for First Man. All right. For my number three, this is super, super, super close to being my, my number two. But uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not uh, as less excited for it because I am extremely, extremely excited for this film. And that is The House That Jack Built by Lars von Trier. Um, uh, if people know me, Antichrist is one of my favorite films. So that's by Lars von Trier. So instantly I'm excited for this. And this film, I've seen the trailer. It, it looks like Lars von Trier is doing something again that's just going to piss people off. And that's why I'm excited for it. Honestly, because... He just fucking goes for it, man. He, he's relentless. And, like, I've never seen a director like him uh, in the modern age that just doesn't give a fuck, man. And the film is about, like, a serial killer who kills a lot of people. And from what I've heard that happens in this film, it sounds extremely graphic. And it might just be his most graphic film. So that's intriguing. Um, and I do think it sounds interesting. Um, you know, I think like serial killers, you know, you know, what's interesting because, you know, they have such like a different like, way of looking at life. And I'm interested in seeing how Lars von Trier, you know, like captures that in his fucked up, twisted way that he does. But it's gonna, it's gonna be so like unapologetically brutal, probably. And I'm it's pretty sure it's gonna come on like VOD uh, and stuff. But I'm just saying this right now. If I can get to see this in theaters, so I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be rated. I'm fucking seeing it, okay? I don't give a fuck. So I am very, very excited for this. It has a great cast too. So I am very, very excited for this. And that is why the House of Chuckle is my number three. All right, now we get into our number two. Oh no. Okay, so my number two is Mary Poppins Return. Oh! <laughs> Suck, my cock, <laughs> Suck my cock! Suck my motherfucking cock! Oh, yes. Don't give a shit! Caden lost! Caden lost! <laughs> that means you must watch Trolls, bitch! And I have to watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Wonder Woman 1984 for the win. Yes! I have to rewatch Trolls now. <laughs> we'll do it together. We were all wrong. Fuck. <laughs> okay, so on that note, yeah, no one is hosting the next Top 5 Anticipated. We but you know what? My... We're all confident and we all lost our confidence. Just oh, I, I still have a shot here. But yes, number two is Mary Poppins Returns. Mary Poppins is one of my favorite movies from my childhood. I love the musical numbers. I thought Julie Andrews did a wonderful job as Mary Poppins, as well as the entire cast in their own respective roles. They were incredible. It was well-directed, just had great writing. The fact that they are doing a sequel is definitely very interesting. As we are filming this, I'm kind of surprised we don't have a full trailer because the teaser trailer dropped back in February. So I'm kind of surprised we don't have an official trailer at this point. But just from the teaser trailer, it looks visually stunning. And it really does capture, you know, just the look of the town from Mary Poppins. And obviously, Emily Blunt has some big shoes to fill because she is taking on Julie Andrews' role now. Knowing how talented Emily Blunt is, I can see her doing a great job of playing Mary Poppins and just making it her own. That's all I can ever hope. Just have it um, make it her own and just still be a really great Mary Poppins. I think Christmas or near Christmas is definitely the perfect time to release this movie. Oh yeah, and Lynn Mo Lin manuel Miranda, I can't talk right now, is in this too. I'm looking forward to seeing him in this too. Can't wait to just listen to the music here. So yeah, it's my number two. I can't wait. <clears throat> my number two is First Man. Um, I am excited as hell for this. And even without Ryan Gosling, this, this definitely does add to it with Ryan Gosling and Damien Chazelle. I've always been interested in the story of the moon landing my entire life basically ever since i like learned about it in school i've always been interested in the story so the fact that this is now going to be brought to the big screen and uh you know told with uh by jamie and chazelle with ryan gosling playing uh 
uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong, I believe that's uh, his name. Neil um, Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Thank you. Did you just mention Louis Armstrong? Did you just mention Mr. Waterwood? Okay, I could have said. Okay, okay, listen, listen. I could have okay. said Billy Joe Armstrong, so fuck all of you. Oh, yeah, okay. Neil so you're Armstrong wrong all the way. People to ever live. But did he make American Idiot though? No, he didn't. Yes, so, he did. Now, now, um, what you say? Who gives a shit? I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Who now, um, what a wonderful <laughs> moon landing. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So Neil Armstrong. Thank you. Suck my dick. He's playing Neil Armstrong in this, and uh, he seems like he's going to get another great performance. See, Ryan Gosling is easily one of my favorite actors working today. And uh, Claire Foy, who I was very impressed with in Unsane, so I'm excited to see her in more things. I know she's in this and in Girl on the Spider's Web, so I'm glad that she's getting more work because I do want to see her in more stuff. And Damien Chazelle is a great director. Um, I loved Whiplash. I really liked La La Land. The dude is a masterful director and I am very interested to see how they'll take all the space sequence, like when they get on the moon and shit. I cannot wait to see that. It's it, Hopefully it's going to be quite mind-blowing and I can't wait to see it. After seeing that trailer, it just skyrocketed even more to being close to my number one. If my number one wasn't coming out this year, this easily would have been my number one. So, yeah, First Man looks incredible. I can't wait to see it. So, yeah, my number two, First Man. My number two is Bohemian Rhapsody. Like many people, I'm a big Queen fan. I love pretty much from what I've listened to. I love all all the songs that I've listened to. And uh, even with the whole Brian Singer thing, forget about that. The movie looks incredible. Rami Malek looks perfect. He looks amazing as Ray Mercury. I feel like they, from the trailer, it seems like it may seem like they're focusing on Freddie Mercury, but is I think it's trying to focus on how like how the like the band get like how they work together and how they make their music. And all and I just think that the movie looks like a great biopic, and I really I'm really hyped for it. All right, so my number two. This one, two and one, were very close to each other for sure. A lot of people probably do think this is my number one. It is my number two, and that is Damien Giselle's probably next masterpiece, First Man. I am so incredibly excited for this. Obviously, Damien Giselle, I think, is one of the best guys working out there. Whiplash and La La Land are two of the best films of this entire decade. He really does have a knack for really stunning visuals and you know, stories about dreams and things like that. And what I really love about this movie is that both of his previous films have featured jazz music, something that he, you know, has a passion for. Mo Landing the Moon, on the other hand, isn't really something that's in his wheelhouse. It still continues that theme of dreams, but it's something a little bit different. And from the looks of it, this film looks heart pounding. Uh, similar to Tony and Caden and a couple others, I did in fact see this. Uh, the <laughs> IMAX review of this before Mission Possible Fallout, and oh my god, it, it, it looks stunning. It, it honestly, it looks like it's perfectly going to put you into that position. It looks like it's going to show what landing on the moon was really like, just how stressful and anxiety ridden these men really were. Ryan Gosling looks like he's going to give an incredible performance here. Uh, the film also looks like it's going to deal with the idea of, you know, can he really, obviously we know he's going to accomplish it, but it looks like that doubt is really going to be presented very well. You got a phenomenal cast here, Kyle Chandler, Corey Stoll, Claire Foy. I mean, so many recognizable faces. I'm really excited <laughs> to see what Damien Chazelle does here. This is without a doubt his biggest film to date, and that is why First Man is my number two. My number two is Bad Times at the El Royale. This movie looks phenomenal. I'm a big fan of Drew Goddard. Uh, he's written a lot of stuff like The First Cloverfield and The Martian, and he's worked on Daredevil and The Defenders, but his writing and directing work on The Cabin in the Woods is Phenomenal, and I love that movie so much. I think it's so unique and special. So when I found out he was finally directing another film, I was like, sign me up day one, and then the trailer came out, increased my excitement. It, it just looks like the perfect kind of film 
for me at least, because like you have these complete strangers, all different backstories, all interacting in this one messed up place. Like that that sounds amazing to me. And I, I think Drew Goddard can do a lot of unique, crazy stuff with that. And I'm I'm just overall very excited for it. The look of the film looks great. The cast is great. Uh, Chris Hemsworth teaming up with them again after Cabin in the Woods. Also hope Dakota Johnson can be great in this also. And just Nick Offerman also, Ron Swanson, the legend, just so many great people. Yes. In, <laughs> so many great people in this movie, and I'm sure that they all can work with Drew Goddard's script in a great way. And I'm hoping that their characters are all fleshed out like Drew Goddard can actually do for them. And I, I'm just really excited. I think Drew Goddard is a is a really great, unique talent out there. And I think he should put more work out. And this is a great sign that he's going to be putting more out. I hope so, at least, because this looks very unique and special. My number two <laughs> is Orson Welles, The Other Side of the Wind. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Now. Never heard of it. <laughs> now. I thought, I thought that was number one. I know. But my number one, I'm more excited for. Mm. Now, this film is apparently supposed to be like the final released uh, film by Orson Welles that was completed. Netflix, uh, I believe, com- like worked with a lot of like <clears throat> companies and studios and they ended up com- com- completing it. And essentially what it's about is it's about a filmmaker who was working back in like the day as a classic Hollywood and he comes out of like retirement. I'm not really sure. There's like different like things out there, but like, I guess he's in like Europe and he comes back to direct a film, but it's now in the 1970s in Hollywood and and he's trying to get adjusted to the new style of, uh, you know, filmmaking and how Hollywood works now. And it's basically like a mockumentary and it's going to like switch between like black and white. And it's also inner, uh, it's also intertwined with uh, another film that's parodying the work <clears throat> of Michelangelo uh, Antonio. I think that's how you say his name. If you don't know who that is, he directed, uh, let's see, um, the La Ventura, La Note in the Clips, which is one of the best trilogies of all time, uh, Red Desert, um, his most famous film, Blow Up, um, Identification of a Woman, Must I Go On? So that's very interesting. And the reason I'm so excited for this, uh, there's many, is because uh, it sounds fantastic. It sounds crazy and just so weird. It takes such like a simple idea, but just makes it just so like like different. And also, it's Orson it's Orson Welles who was you know one of if not the greatest director of all time. So I mean, you know that that's just the, that that's just even more of a cherry on top. And you know the fact that that, that this film is getting so much love and treatment. It's been you know you know, trying to, you know, complete it for so long now, and that's finally being completed. It was my number one most anticipated for so long, but there is one other film that I am more excited for. Uh, but nonetheless, this film sounds amazing, and I am very, very excited to see this, and that is why The Other Side of the Wind is my number <coughs> two. So, yes, and also, this is a Netflix, going to be a Netflix original, so there is some good Netflix stuff. So, yes. All right, now let's get into our number one. All right, let's know. Yeah, I'm very fucking Tony. <laughs> I think I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Okay, after hearing all the movies, I have a good feeling I know what number one is. Oh, okay. I'll do you says first man will be number one. Screen. Yeah, sure you do. But, but I have a good I mean, feeling. Again. Well, now that he didn't say first man, this would have been my <laughs> second guess, so. So. Um, I know this might shock a lot of people, uh, but my number one is Welcome to Marwin. I see. Oh, that was, see? oh I was going to say that. See, see that would have been my, that was actually going to be my second guess if like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know that. Tony, knowing Tony, see, I know this motherfucker, I tell you. But you know what, you oh, know, I think so, I know so why. I'm so proud of you. Yes, this is a movie I have been so excited for ever since I read about it. What was it? I think either earlier this year or even late last year. I just remember reading about this movie. I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. And then I got excited because it stars Steve Carell, who is one of my favorite actors, as directed by Robert Zemeckis, one of my favorite directors. So when you combine those two together, of course I'm going to get excited. But then that trailer dropped, however. And then the minute I watched that trailer, I was like, holy shit, I am fucking sold on this movie. Like, wow. (laughs) Like, you want to talk about 
Robert uh, Zemeckis just taking imagination, which he is so good at. Obviously, Robert Zemeckis is like one of the most imaginative directors working ever. So he is like the right director to direct a movie like this, honestly. Like just the scope of this world when we cut to the action figures that this man played by Steve Carell has created. Like it's like a village in his yard because you know, a bunch of these uh, men have unfortunately, they've attacked him and his memory isn't like really the best. So he's using these uh, people to help his recovery, which I found very fascinating. And just when we get to the scenes with these action figures and their movements, like, wow, does it look absolutely incredible. And the way the movie from the trailer, of course, when it moves from the action figures and then cuts back to like the live action parts with Steve Carell or Leslie Mann, Isa Gonzalez, you know, whoever else, it looks like it's gonna be edited so well. It looks shot so beautifully as expected. It looks so well directed by Robert Zemeckis. The trailer truly took my breath away. It looks like it'll have a lot of humor to it. But also has uh, also looks like it's gonna have a lot of heart to it and a lot of meaning to it and uh, obviously everyone knows that I'm a sucker for movies that deal with you know having your imagination so of course for that reason welcome to Marwin is my number one as excited as I am for Mary Poppins returns I would agree with film fan with what he said earlier out of all the movies coming around the Christmas time this is that one Christmas release I can definitely say I'm the most excited for so my number one is Welcome to Marwin. So now yeah. to, my, to my number one. And all I got to say is, is this a dream? Is this fantasy? And that is my number one, Bohemian Rhapsody. I knew it. Uh, I yes, knew this it. motherfucker. Oh, we all knew it. <laughs> See, this motherfucker called it. Okay, exp explanation. Um, so I called this motherfucker last night, and um, I told him, hey, what do you think my number one is? And he said, Bohemian Rhapsody. And um, I was like, oh, God, he got it right from the get-go. So, um, but yeah, this is easily my number one most anticipated film for the rest of it. I am a huge Queen fan. Ever since I was a kid, uh, I have basically have grown up on their music. I absolutely love them, and the fact that uh, they're going to get a whole biopic about them is very, very intriguing to me. And the story of the band is quite fascinating to me. So I am very excited to see how it is brought to life in this film. Uh, Rami Malek, I believe that's how you say his name, he looks... It is scary how almost identical he just acts and looks like Freddie Mercury. Oh, my God, yes. Like, it's just, it's perfect casting. And I cannot wait to see how he is, like, fully in the film. Like, just uh, seeing the entirety of just seeing him. And also the other members of the band, too. Whoever they got to play the guitarist, God, it looks almost identical to him. It's amazing. I cannot wait till when they, um... You know, when they perform the songs, whether it be well, Bohemian Rhapsody or my favorite, Don't Stop Me Now. I can't wait to see how that's all played out. Um, this just looks amazing in scope and whatever. It, it looks fantastic to me. It looks like it could be a fantastic music biopic. My favorite biopics are, well, music biopics. I mean, I love Stray Compton. I love 8 Mile. So hopefully this could be in that realm with great music biopics. I really hope so because... This is based on like one of my absolute favorite bands of all time. So without question, easily my most anticipated movie for the rest of this year is Bohemian Rhapsody. Since a lot of you talked about it, I guess it's my turn. Uh, my number one is First Man. Nice. Nice. It, pretty much kind of what everybody else has been saying. Uh, you know, Damien Chazelle, he's been knocking that apart recently. Uh, Whiplash is a masterpiece. Oh man, I don't give a fuck what any of you, any people, anybody say about it. It's a great movie. This movie looks incredible. It's got, and I like you guys said, like I love how, like he's kind of stepping out of his element because, like, with both Whiplash and La La Land, it's like you can tell, like he's like, like he's like into more like jazz and music type of stuff, and this one is like new for him. It's like him taking on a biopic about Neil Armstrong and like, and. Like I'm sure a lot of people heard about like the like the first man who landed on the moon, and he was like, I wonder how that story went down. And from the trailer, I'm like, okay, you got a great director, and you got one of the best actors working today, Ryan Gosling, to, as your main star. It's like already hyped from the trailer, got me even more hyped. And I'm like, 
these three motherfuckers, I did not see it. I did not see the first look in IMAX. I'm but, sorry. <laughs> but I wish I did, because this movie looks fucking incredible. Oh, my God. And I can't wait to see it once it comes out. I hope I see it in IMAX. Okay. So you guys are going to be like, what the fuck, Kevin? Every single fucking year we do one of these. The big musical that comes out is at number one. I don't give a fuck. I, I, I seriously don't. My number one's Mary Poppins Returns, okay? I don't think anyone is really surprised. Mary Poppins, y'all! I've said for the longest time, not on this channel, but I've said for a while that that's the most anticipated film of the entire year, and I still stick by it. Look, it's not just because it's a musical. You guys know, obviously, I have I have a fetish for musicals, uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's all, uh, that's all that's I talk that. about. And, uh, <laughs> In all honesty, guys, Mary Poppins was one of my favorite films as a kid. I watched that film almost religiously. Uh, it was one of those films that my mom got me into, and I think many people can relate to that. It's a film that I think should be passed on from generation to generation. Unfortunately, some of us, Caden, have not had the have had the <laughs> yeah! um, of that amazing uh, film. and. I think it's just everything about that film is just the <laughs> definition of childhood and wonder and adventure. And it's one of those films that's like essential to watch as a kid. And here's the thing. Is this kind of unnecessary? Sure, it is. But if you really think about it, Peel Travers wrote multiple Mary Poppins books. So this sequel was always a long time coming. Mary Poppins was very successful. Obviously, Julie Andrews, being the age she is and unfortunately isn't able to really sing anymore, she cannot play the role. But seeing Emily Blunt step in from the uh, few the, the few glimpses we've gotten of her, I'm honestly sold. Julie Andrews said that this is, you know, she approved of this casting, and I think that's really great. I think she has the role down very well. The cast here is just phenomenal. Lin-Manuel Miranda's coming in, always uh, giving an incredible performance, you know, fresh off of Hamilton and Moana. I think he's going to do an incredible job here. Dick Van Dyke actually is going to have a role in this film. He's not playing Bert, but he does have a role in here, so that's really cool. Meryl Streep once again getting another uh, Best Supporting Actress award at the Oscars for sure next oh year. <laughs> wait, wait, Meryl <laughs> Streep, isn't it? Yeah, she yeah. is. I don't know that. Huh. He plays like Mary Poppins' like cousin or whatever. Uh, Julie Walters, everyone's favorite part of Mamma Mia's in here. You know, Shut up! Another great actress from another great actor, Colin Firth, also from Mamma Mia, is in here. But in all on in all seriousness, guys, I am very excited for this. Uh, films like this just remind me of being a kid again. Similar to Tony, I just can't wait for that soundtrack to drop. I don't think it's going to top the first one. That soundtrack is kind of unparalleled, and it's so iconic that I don't think we're going to get another spoonful of sugar or Jolly Holiday or something like that. If we did, that'd be really dope, but I don't really think that's going to happen, unfortunately. But I am still hyped out of my mind for this film. I'm so happy that Disney's finally doing a sequel. Don't make this PC. Make this the sequel we all want. I'm really hoping this is something truly great. And for all those reasons alone, Mary Poppins Returns is my number one. My number one most anticipated for the rest of the year. It's a film I'm surprised not too many people are talking about. I was expecting a little bit more of it, but uh, my number one most is Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> 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 Wonder Woman is such an iconic character, and Gal Gadot is so excellent. That, uh, that actually got pushed back to next year. Shoot, so okay. Redo uh, your entire list. I'll, wow. I'll save that for next year. All right, let me, hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, got it. All right, my real number one is Dr. Seuss is the Grinch by Illumination. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> 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 I just found out they replaced Jim Carrey as the Grinch, so I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to insert Desperia. Ooh, yes. Uh, the new trailer dropped just a couple days ago, and uh, I'm pretty hyped. Now, the director, Luca Guadagnum, um, he directed last year, Call Me By Your Name, which was a film I liked, you know, similar to uh, Barry Jenkins with Moonlight. Like, I liked the movie, but I didn't love it. Um, so it was like when I saw his name attached to this project, I was like, okay, let's see what he can, what he has. And when the trailers came out, I was like, oh my God. This is currently my favorite film of the year is Hereditary. But what I'm seeing here, it looks like Luca might give Hereditary a run for its money, honestly. And this is it's surprising since this isn't A24 and it's Amazon of all, of all companies. 
that surprised me the most, but it just looks so like just spine chillingly mesmerizing is the best way I can describe it. Like the cinematography alone already looks like best of the year level stuff and the acting, like everyone seems like they're on their A game for this, like totally embracing everything. And I just like, <laughs> I can't wait to see what kind of scares and what kind of suspenseful moments they're going to have because the movie is going to be two hours and 30 minutes long. And that's, that's that's really interesting to say these. I'm sure a lot of people might go like, I'm a little worried about that. I'm actually not. I'm actually more curious to see what they're going to jam pack in there. And obviously, you know, running times can change like before the movie's released. But if this is the runtime they're sticking with, I am totally sold on it. I want to see what they have. So Suspiria, my most anticipated of the year because Wonder Woman comes out next year. Yes. You could say May Jackson's Suspiria. Okay. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. What does that even mean? <laughs> Tony, 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 bad boy. So, you know, for for most of this year, um, my number one uh, has been The Other Side of the Wind. But, you know, recently it has changed to this film that I am even more excited for, honestly. Um, and that is Tyler Perry's Nobody. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, I love Tyler Perry. Absolutely, it's my favorite movie. Um, <laughs> I don't see it. can't even go that far. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> my actual number one is Shoplifters. Um, oh. I don't think this should be a surprise for anyone except for Kevin. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, Kevin, I'm joking. It's supposed to be a joke. You can laugh at it. <laughs> I just didn't know it was number one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so my number one is Shoplifters. This is easily my most displayed film for the rest of the year. Th this film sounds amazing, and it won the Palme d'Or at Cannes, which, in my opinion, it, um, I, I trust a lot more than the best picture uh, from the Academy. It's basically about a family who's, you know, a bunch of, uh, who, who lives, uh, I, I believe in, uh, I believe in Japan. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but I would assume so. And they're really, really poor, so they have to shoplift to get all their, the needs to, you know, live, basically. Um, and then one day they find a, a girl who is lonely. She doesn't have anyone and she's like really cold and stuff. And they bring her in and, you know, they decide to, you know, uh, keep her and, you know, and they're trying to, you know, manu maneuver for, you know, their ways of life and, you know, for doing all these crimes and stuff, you know, just basically to live. And it sounds extremely interesting. And the director of this, I hope I, I say their name right. I probably won't, but uh, Hirokazu Okorida, um, they have a really good uh, filmography, uh, Still Walking, uh, our little sister, like Hopper, like Son, After the Storm, etc. It sounds really simplistic, but it's it seems like it's going to handle the, the subject matter with a sense of, like, you know, really, really heavy maturity and complexity. And there's having, you know, that Palme d'Or, you know, slapped onto it is even more exciting. And, you know, one of the things, honestly, like, seriously, that's why I'm also excited for it. The posters for this film are easily the best posters I've seen of any film this decade. They're fucking gorgeous. I want to get them framed. They're, they're beautiful. So, yes, I am very, very excited. For this, I, I'm excited for more than uh, the other side of the wind. So that's saying something. I think it just sounds fantastic. Uh, so that's why Shoplifters is my number one for the rest of the year. All right, wow. everybody. Now that was our top five anticipated movies for Woo! Fall Winter 2018. Now, it. now, as for everyone, you know, even though no one really particularly won the certain competition, Jackson at least you all. Yes, yes, Jackson was close, yes, of all of them, yes. But you know what? You all tried. I know you have to watch bad movies as punishment, but pat yourself in the back for trying anyway, so good job there. <laughs> you have to watch Trolls now. <laughs> in the factory. Comment down below. Let me know. What are your top five anticipated movies for Fall Winter 2018? And, of course, I will let everyone say their goodbye, starting off with Film Fan. Where can these people find you? Um, before I say that, um, I just want to say the highlight of this entire uh, video was not uh, seeing Caden lose. It was actually seeing Jackson change his fucking shirt every single goddamn time he got on fucking camera. That <laughs> was glorious. That. I didn't even notice that. That, that was glorious. He literally changed his shirt with each fucking <laughs> pick. It was great. Um... But yes, uh, you can find me on you, my YouTube channel, Film Panel Five Nine Nine. Uh, it's the same on everything else, Twitter, Instagram, all that good fucking jizz that everybody's using nowadays. Um, so uh, yeah, 
Um, thank you for having me on, Tony. It was very great to see all of your top fives as usual. And um, can't wait when we uh, do this again uh, in December. So, yeah. They can find me on Stardust because I don't have shit on my YouTube channel. The fuck? <laughs> what the hell, man? What the fuck? <laughs> Well, I'm a lazy fuck. All right, so uh, you know, no excuses. But uh, thank you, Tony. Even though I will say fuck you because I lost, and now I gotta rewatch one of the worst goddamn fucking movies ever made. But you know, The Last Airbender. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you to Caden and my boy Triples and uh, Jackson and Kevin. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, as you can excuse me, I'm gonna watch Deadpool 2 the super duper cut. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Like I said, I was very excited to share my top five with all of you. This was honestly really tough. Probably one of the toughest uh, lists I've ever done just because there's so many great movies coming out. Uh, I just felt like I had to do a top 20. That's why my thing went so long. I do apologize for that. But either way, guys, uh, like I said, very much enjoyed doing this. You can find me, of course, on my channel. That's it for this video. Oh, this isn't my video, so I can't do my <laughs> <laughs> Good job. The channel. Good job, Kevin. Good job. Vote for that. <laughs> fuck Kevin. And yeah, I won't fuck you guys for that. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you, Triples, for noticing my shirts. That was yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but you can it. you can find me on my YouTube channel. It's literally my name, Jason Fletcher. I will be live streaming soon at the nearest Buffalo Wild Wings that isn't on 35th Street. <laughs> <laughs> a fan from there. I am and just hearing about the story now. All right, ciao for now. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! He's gonna change his shirt again. Okay, and now, Caden, uh, I hope you have a spicy outro. Oh, oh shit! Oh my god! Fucking Chippendale dance over here. Oh no! Oh, oh no! You listen to me, Tony, okay, bitch? <laughs> you have never once talked about the whatever fucking Robert Zemeckis Deep Crow movie. Once. I have never heard you talk about that movie. Once. Mary Poppins is going to be your number one. Now I have to rewatch my least favorite fucking movie. You um, fucking I mean... Uh, when, the, when, the, when the trailer dropped, I did share it on Facebook. This is where overconfidence gets you, boy. You <laughs> this is overconfident, okay? I don't give a fuck. You know, Tony, you thought his was great. You know, look at me. <coughs> okay, anyways, um, thank you for having me on. Oh, um, God. Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Notice how you don't see MC Deadpool in this video like at all? You just hear his voice? Well, from my point of view and the guest's point of view, we see him shirtless. And that is why we are laughing and freaking out at the same time. But thank your lucky stars you can't even see him in this video. <laughs> Hide your kids! Hide your kids! Hide your wife! <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, family friendly content over here. Family friendly. I really hope the people that watch your SpongeBob videos are watching this, Tony. <laughs> oh man, I would not be surprised. I know it. Uh, I had a good time. Um, and you can check me out on Letterbox at Upper Wonder, uh, where I'm the most active. Uh, my YouTube channel, which has been kind of dead when I launched it, just because I've been ha a lot's happened this summer. So, um, so, um, so, <laughs> so, um, so, um, oh my god, I, 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 Gary, a lot, oh my. a lot has happened this summer, but you know, I, I, my YouTube show will be back, so check out, check out my music, it's good shit. So, everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with. Film fan, MC Deadpool, Kevin Folk, Jackson Fulcher, and Caden LaPlante. I'm dead. And don't forget that all of us will always have. <laughs> Representing Disney.